Hi, and welcome to Refresh and Restore Yoga. I'm Emily. Today we'll be working on heart openers, opening the chest and the shoulders. Class will be more like 90, 60 minutes today versus 90. You can go ahead and grab a couple blocks, bolster, blankets, and a strap. If you don't have yoga props, no worries. Just get creative and find something around your house or wherever you are. These classes are donation-based, so if you'd like to support two San Francisco organizations, Rise Yoga for Youth, providing youth in the Bay Area with yoga education, and the Center for Families at UCSF Minneap Children's Hospital, which is a resource center for parents who have kids in the hospital. So we'll open with a quick ohm, and then we'll come into a kind of restorative pose actually to start class today. So inhaling and exhaling to clear and prepare. You can close your eyes and soften your gaze, or soften your gaze if you'd like. So inhaling, exhaling out of the mouth. Inhaling. When you're ready, you can slowly open your eyes, come off of whatever you're sitting on, go ahead and take a blanket, you could also use a block or a bolster if you prefer, roll up the blanket into a nice little roll, placing it towards the top of your mat, and then you'll come and lie down on the prop with the prop kind of at the bottom of your, kind of the, your shoulder blades the widest part of your ribs, maybe where your bra strap is. And slowly, carefully using your feet to help you roll and settle, find a cozy spot for your shoulder blades. And relaxing up and over, head on the ground. You can always take another blanket or something, if that's too much, and place it under your head at whatever level you'd like. You can take the arms out to the sides. You could bring them up and overhead, maybe in a cactus arm or kind of a diamond shape. If you're happy here, you could also take your legs out long, keeping the legs engaged, toes pointing towards the sky. That may be a little too intense on your low back, in which case you re-bend the knees and bring feet back in towards the butt. Closing the eyes here if you'd like or just softening the gaze. Start to take stock of your breath. Noticing your inhales and exhales. Maybe one's longer. One's a different quality than the other. Not judging, but just taking notice. Starting practice by letting gravity do a little bit of work for us and helping us, supporting us in our heart opening practice. You'll be noticing whether there's any tension or particularly particular quality uh, feeling in the body around your chest and your shoulders right now. Maybe there's some joy or sadness coming up for you. Again, no judgment, just noticing. Witnessing. I invite you to set an intention for your practice today. Maybe that could be gratitude and some love for yourself. Maybe you cultivate that through the practice and then coming off your mat today, you're able to share that. Whatever that 
feeling or desire is, that reason you came to your mat, just take a moment and acknowledge it. And when you're ready, you can begin to shape the breath, inhaling for count of one, two, three, four, and exhaling for count of one, two, three, four. Inhaling again for count of one, two, three, four, pausing. And exhaling for count of one, two, three, four, pause, inhale one, two, three, four, pause, and exhale one, two, three, four. Continue on your own. You need to lengthen or shorten the counts. You're starting to make the breath audible, so a little bit of a fogging, dark battery sound, the ocean, whatever you want to call it. And each exhale, sinking. A little bit more into the support beneath you. And on each inhale, expanding, maybe feeling the push of the rib cage into the support and an opening as a result. When you're ready, slowly the feet are extended out, bring them back in, rolling gently over to one side. You can push up with one hand to maybe move the prop and support out of the way. Just pausing here on your side in a fetal position, whichever side you chose. And using your top hand, then use your body and hand to help push you up into a seated position. Coming forward onto your hands and your knees. Shoulders stacked over wrist, hips stacked over knees. Taking a couple rounds of a normal traditional cat cow. Inhaling, dropping the upper chest down to the ground, looking forward, and exhaling, curling the upper back, pushing the ground away, inhaling forward. Drawing the mat back to meet you, spreading across your collarbones, exhaling, belly into spine, chin into chest, inhale, and exhale. Continuing at your own pace. You can start to maybe move more, more organically. You can wag your tail side to side. You could move in circles. Honoring what your body needs right now. When you're ready, tuck the toes, not coming straight into downward facing dog, tucking the toes so that then you sit back into a pseudo child's pose with the toes tucked underneath. Maybe it won't be as intense as if you had the torso upright like we did um, in the shoulder video. Bringing your forearms in down to the ground, palms on the ground, fingertips spread wide, 
away from each other. <coughs> Excuse me. Checking your shoulder over your elbow. You can walk out to a point wherever feels good on your seat and your legs. Trying to isolate the movement now into the upper chest, so pushing the ground away. And rounding the back, inhaling, dropping the chest down to the ground. Inhaling, pushing the ground away, making a nice big rounded spot between your shoulder blades, bulging upwards. Inhaling, dropping, really just the the chest and the collar rooms down to the ground. Pulling back a little. Exhaling, pushing up and away. And then dropping down. And you notice that I'm not tucking or untucking my pelvis here like I did in cat cow. I've isolated the movement to the upper portion of the spine. Neck is long, gazes down to the ground, maybe in between your forearms. And a couple more, just like this. Dropping the chest and pushing away. And then come to more of a neutral position and take your right hand off of the ground, put it between uh, the hand behind your head, kind of the ridge on the back of the skull. Go ahead and tap your elbow, right elbow towards your left thumb, and then opening up the elbow to the sky, give you a nice twist rotation in your upper back. So inhaling, elbow to the thumb, and then exhaling, twisting up to the sky. Mm -hmm. And then exhaling, twisting. A couple more rounds. Keeping a firm engagement through your left arm, forearm, to the shoulder, not letting your chest collapse down, but really pushing the ground away with your left arm and shoulder. And up the sky. And last one. Elbow to the thumb, up to the sky. And then bringing the right forearm down to the ground. A slight push of the ground away to make sure you're not dropping your chest. So pushing away and then lifting the left hand off the ground carefully. Left hand to the back of the skull. Inhaling, left elbow to right thumb towards it. And then exhaling, opening. Inhaling, elbow to thumb. Exhale, open. Down to the thumb. Exhale, open. Exhale to open. And just one more like this. And exhale to open. Carefully spinning the chest back down to the ground, releasing the hand, releasing the forearm back to the ground. You can push up back into all fours on top of the toes. You can give your feet a little bit of a massage here. Pounding the, the upper part of the foot into the ground can feel nice. Retacking the toes, coming into a plank position just for a moment to get the distance right so that there's length between your hands and your feet. Shoulders over wrists, feet and legs long hips distance apart between the feet, and then push back into a downward facing dog. Bend your knees a lot, 
And then once your knees are bent a lot, stick your booty really high up towards the sky. You're getting a nice rotation there. Your pose. And then straighten your legs. Keeping that. Checking in that you're not dumping too much into the upper back, but there is engagement. Pulling these ribs in. Pushing firmly through the hands. Check to see if your fingers are spread wide, your pointer fingers pointing towards the front of the room or out the way from you. Pushing firmly between your thumb and your pointer finger and then spinning the elbows down to the sky, the triceps down to the sky. And then dropping the head. You will need to Wiggle a little here, bending one knee and then the other. Just go for it. If you want to try for a little bit of a balance rotation, you can lift the right hand off of the ground, reaching back towards your left shin, ankle, wherever it reaches, keeping strength and length in your spine and arm, looking up and underneath your armpit. Just for another breath or two. And then use the right hand down to the ground, slowly, carefully, tinting up on the left fingertips, and then bringing the left hand to the right shin, right ankle. Checking to see if you need to push the hips over to the left a little bit. And then turning your head and your upper back to look under your armpit. Releasing and bringing the left hand back down to a downward facing dog. Rolling forward and back just real quick. And some movement in your shoulders. Inhaling forward, exhaling back. And then inhaling forward, you can. Lower all the way to the ground, you can bring your knees down and lower the chest belly down to the ground. Just something a little bit different than your typical cobra pose. Bringing the arms out in front of you, arms long. Just make sure the legs are long out and behind you. You'll push into the tops of the feet Lift the kneecaps off the ground. Lift the, or push the thigh bones into the ground. Lift the low belly off of the ground. Lifting the head, nose just to hover, nose just a couple inches off the ground, and then lifting the arms off the, off the ground too. So your arms, nose, very low belly, and kneecaps are very slightly lifted off the ground and your feet, thighs, and chest are pushing into the ground to help with that lift. You can't see it, but there is very little bit of space here in my low belly off the ground, my kneecaps, my nose, and my arms. Keeping the back of the neck long. I'm here for another breath, and then lower. Everything to the ground. Pause. And when you're ready, push the feet, push the thighs, push the chest, and then inhale with the knees. Lift the low belly, lift the arms and the nose. 
keeping those all lifted, breathing for a couple of breaths here. Lower. Rest. Maybe sigh. And then one last time sitting up. Push the feet. Stretch them on behind you. The upper thighs. Push the chest. And inhaling, lifting the arms, the nose, the low belly, and the kneecaps off the ground. Checking to see if your shoulders are up in your ears. Maybe you don't need to draw them all the way back down on the back. You can play with that distance here a little bit. Find something in between having the shoulders up to your ears and all the way down your back. The tendency is they will often be up by the ears, so checking in on that. Back of the neck long again, pulling from the back of the ears up towards the ceiling, and like you're head butting the front wall. And the breath here. And exhale, lower down the ground. You can do the pillow with your hands on top of each other, under your forehead. <sighs> And now, sliding your right arm underneath and across your chest to the left. So, sh right shoulders underneath your chin. Flip the palm up to face the sky. Use your left hand for support as you roll a little bit onto your right side, bringing your left knee up towards the left hip height, kind of like a half frog position. And then using your left hand, you likely need to inch your knee over with your hips, rolling onto your upper back into a supine twist, opening up the left arm to the left side of the room. Well, no longer the left side of the room. Now the right, the right side of the room. Palm facing the sky. Your knee, if it comes off the ground, you could place some padding under it. You could place a blanket block under it. You don't want to hang out too much in space. Your shoulder, your left shoulder, will likely not touch the ground. If you can bring your left hand over to the ground, stretching across the chest, across the collarbones to get an extra nice juicy stretch in your left pec in front of the chest. And then if you want, you can, it's okay on your neck, take the gaze over the left shoulder, rotating the neck. I find this version of coming into the supine twist, the reclined twist, gives you an extra large opening and isolation into the upper back and chest and heart. Bring your left hand to your left shoulder, slide it across the collarbones, down the right arm. If you can, past the right hand, keep stretching, and I'm getting a nice stretch across the back, and then sliding the hand back up the right arm, across the collarbones, opening back up. Repeat that several more times. Shoulder, collarbone, down the arm, reach, 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 and then reverse up the arm, across the collarbones, and open. And 
you can inhale as you reach and exhale as you twist. Inhale. And exhale. Neck just kind of coming and head coming along with you. Try not to strain them, just letting them roll as well. You can rest your chin on your right arm as you roll. And exhale open. Next time you come into the kind of closed book position, place the left hand near your chest, remove whatever props you had, using the left hand to help slide your left knee back down to meet the right. Carefully sliding the right arm out and under from underneath you, taking the left arm out to the right side, shoulder under the chin, palm facing up. Use your right hand to help support you and roll onto your left hip to bring your right knee up to hips height. And then using your right hand to help you roll open, keeping the right knee as close to the ground as possible for you. If you want, you place support under it. Readjusting, kind of feel stuck at any point, and then opening up the arms into the T position. <sighs> Taking a moment there, and when you're ready, neck can turn over to gaze over your right arm, with your right fingers. So little breaths here. Maybe checking to see if your left hip is really, your right hip is really hiked up high. Maybe making sure there's some length to the right side of the body. You can use your hand to help support that. And then right hand to right shoulder, bending the elbow across the collarbone. Down the left arm, if you can, pass the left hand, stretching the right arm out and away. And then exhaling, reverse. Opening up. Inhaling. Closing and stretching, reaching, rounding through the back. And exhale. Open. Take this to any depth. You don't have to go all the way down the arm if it doesn't feel good. You can stop where it feels right for you right now. You don't have to bring the arm, the right arm extended to you every time. Play around with what's going to work for you. Open. Next time you come into a closed book position, if you had anything under your knee, removing that, placing the right hand in front of the chest, sliding the right leg back to meet the left, rolling onto your belly, moving the left arm out from underneath you, resetting here, setting up for sphinx. So forearms on the ground, palms on the ground in a downward facing dog position. You can really almost like claw and grip with your fingertips into the ground. Make sure your shoulders are over your elbows. A lot of people will have the shoulder or the elbow way forward of the shoulder. So check in with both of them. About, you know, armpits distance. And then from here, 
think of when we did that funky, almost like a little Superman low belly lift. See if you can lift the low belly, push into the feet, push into the thighs, lift the kneecaps, and then dragging, pretending like you're dragging the mat towards you, lift the chest through the gate of your arms. Again, lifting from the back of the ears, almost headbutting the front of the room. This is a super strong sphinx. Keeping the low belly lifted, pulling the chest through, trying to draw the shoulder blades in towards each other on your back. Exhaling, more for a moment. Setting up again. Check your shoulder elbow placement, clawing your fingertips into the mat, pushing your toes into the ground, lifting your kneecaps, pushing your thighs in, lifting your low belly, pulling the chest through, dragging the mat back towards you. This is a wonderful place to stay if you'd like to try something else. Bring the knees back down to the ground just for a moment as you lift the hips up towards the sky and then pushing through the tops of the feet, lift the knees back off of the ground into a forearm plank. And then lower the knees, lower the hips. If you were in sphinx, lower the belly and just kind of relax here for a moment. You can keep the arms where they are. Inhale. We engage into a very strong sphinx, knees off the ground, low belly off the ground, pulling forward. If you want to try again, knees down, lift the hips, lift the knees into a sphinx plank, forearm plank. Knees down, belly down, pelvis down really, belly down, relax. One more time here. Lift the kneecaps, lift the low belly, pull through the arms, drawing the shoulder blades towards each other on your back. Pull arms are firing up, drawing the mat in, knees down, hips up, knees off the ground as well. Hips about shoulder distance or shoulder height off the ground. And then lower knees. Lower hips, pelvis, lower belly, move the arms out to the side and come down for rest for a moment. Hands, fingertips, nibble, height on the ground, tuck your toes, you can come through from your knees or push all the way up, back into downward facing dog. And then slowly walking the feet up towards the hands. Choose your desired distance between the feet. Hang on here, really the first forward fold. Today you can grab your elbows, sway a little bit side to side. Yes, shake your head no. Rolling up to stand, grabbing a strap or something that's gonna work similarly for you. Make a loop in the strap and check it so that the distance of the loop is from kind of armpit to armpit crease, so armpit to armpit. And then taking the strap, putting it just above the elbows, so on the upper arm, you might need to readjust the distance here, picking a strong placement for your feet, bringing the upper arm parallel to the ground, elbows bent at 90 degrees, so the fingers are pointing up to the sky. 
same position that we were just in on the ground. You're basically doing a forearm plank standing up now to really get the benefit. Push the arms into the strap really firmly, keeping the hands in line with the elbows and the shoulders. So the tendency could be to bring the hands out and away and towards the sides. Keep them directly perpendicular, pointing up to the sky, and you're pushing into the strap with your arms, engaging all of these muscles into the back. So pushing here for a moment, and then try to keep the back pretty neutral and where it is at the moment. Start to slowly lift your elbows, keeping the distance and kind of relationship between the forearm and the upper arm the same, and moving the elbows up slowly towards the sky as far as you can, maybe any distance, continuing to push the arms into the strap the entire time. So don't just throw your hips or your chest forward to bring the hands back. Keep the back long, really just moving your shoulders and elbows in space. Breath, one more breath here. And exhale, lower. You can move to remove the strap, but you're going to have to put it now on behind your back. So this might take a little bit of maneuvering. You might need to uh, increase the hole of the strap here. But again, placing it just above the elbows on the upper arms. And here, hands, palms facing each other, almost like you were grabbing a block between your hands. Make sure you're not scrunching up too much into your ears. Also don't want to draw them down too far so that you're just puffing your chest forward. From here, pushing again into the strap and then slowly bringing the arms out and away from you. Pushing into the strap, keeping the arms relatively straight. Fingers engaged, palms facing each other. Breathing. And then hands back towards the thighs. And slowly you can take one hand, maybe to one elbow to help bring, wiggle the strap down. We don't need to find a friend to, to help move, remove the strap. Coming to the top of your mat, standing in mountain pose. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Legs can, hands can come up the legs, straighten the back. Exhale, step the right foot back, knee on the ground, untuck the toes, and from here, keeping the hands on the ground, walk the left foot out a little bit to the left. The hands can come down in between, or both on the inside of your left foot, and from here, those upper back cat cows real quick. Dropping the chest and then pushing the ground away, around the back, around the chest, ground away. And then coming, wiggle the left foot back a little bit towards the right. Coming into an upright low lunge, knee stacked over ankle, hands to your hips. 
you'd be pulling the left hip back just slightly, making sure that you're level from side to side, front to back. Slight tuck of the tailbone, bring some stretch into the front of the right thigh. Arms up and overhead. And then exhale, right hand down to the ground, left arm up to the sky, easy twist. And actually switch the hand, so left hand on the inside side of inside of your left foot, right arm up to the sky. And switch again. So right hand down to the ground, left arm up to the sky. Switch again. Left hand inside of the left foot, right arm up to the sky. One more time this way. Do an easy twist like normal, quote unquote, that we're used to doing in class. And then an open twist. And then both hands come down to the ground. Frame your foot, untuck the right toes, stepping back into downward facing dog. <sighs> Sign there. Right foot stepping forward into your little lunge. Wiggle the right foot out to the right a little bit. You can untuck your left toes. Hands coming to the inside of the right foot, pushing firmly into the ground. Rounding the back, dropping the chest just slightly. Rounding the upper back, dropping the chest slightly. Rounding, pushing away, dropping the chest. Rounding, dropping the chest. And then finding a neutral, you can walk the right foot in to the midline just a little bit more. And then slowly, hands on your thigh, knee stacked over ankle. Maybe drawing the right hip back just a little bit, hands on your hips to chuck. Slight tuck of the tailbone underneath you, arms up and overhead. Pushing firmly into the right heel, firmly into the left shin. And then left hand down to the ground, right arm up to the sky. And switch right hand inside of the right foot, left hand up to the sky, switch. Switch, inhale, open. Exhale, twisting deeper. Inhaling, switching. Exhaling, deeper. You can take these at your own pace if you would like to do a different pace. Next time you open up, that'll be the last time. And then placing the hands inside of the foot, framing the foot, tucking the left toes, stepping forward. Forward fold, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, arms all the way up to the sky. Exhale, hands down. On the side of your body. Mount those. Inhale. Arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step your right foot back. This time, if you'd like to, you can keep the right knee off of the ground. Making sure there's enough distance between your feet that you can. Keep the right leg straighter and really come out to the ball of the right foot so you have a high heel on. Pushing really firmly through the left heel, grabbing your strap before you come up. And come up. Again, you can have your hands on your hips. You could have a slight bend in your right leg just to reposition, straightening the right leg. 
strap in front, wrap it around your upper arm, go the elbows, palms face away from you. Ooh, try not to lose your balance. If you need to take your legs, feet out wider, more hips distance or wider, that's a good way to rebalance. So pushing, like the forearms are pushing into the floor or the wall in front of you. We're trying to rip the strap open here. Breathing. And you can slowly start to keeping the back generally where it is, starting to lift the elbows up towards the sky. Fingers now kind of pointing almost a little bit behind you up towards the top back corner of the room. This one ain't easy, right? You need to look up between your hands for the last moment. And then slowly bring in the hands onto the ground. You can move the strap off to the side for a moment. Priming your foot, shoving back into downward facing dog. <sighs> Shaking your head, releasing your neck. Maybe sighing. And realizing you have another side. When you're ready, inhaling the right leg up to the sky and stepping the right leg forward. You can always do this with the left knee on the ground, checking the distance between your feet so that when your left leg is straight, you can put your high heel on. Pushing firmly into the right heel, grabbing your strap, coming up, right thigh parallel to the ground, bending your left knee just to check in, and then extending left leg long behind you, wrapping your strap around, just above your elbows, making sure the buckle is not on your skin, so I'm always making sure the buckle is kind of in between my arms, re-engaging with my legs, maybe re-bending my knee if I came out of it for a moment, palms away from me. Pushing into the strap super firmly. Breathing out of your mouth at any time. You just need to recenter, reground. I'm closing the lips when you're ready. And slowly bringing the elbows, keeping the legs in the back roughly where they are. There'll always be a little bit of movement, right? We're human. Bringing the elbows up, keeping the firm engagement, the tightness across the strap. You want looking up between your hands for a moment. The hands are really engaged here in this position, like I'm pushing into the ground or something. One more breath in. And then exhale slowly lower, carefully. Making sure your hands are on the ground as you move the strap. Stepping your left foot forward to meet your right. And then come into standing. Grabbing the bolster so that it's nearby. Coming into a bridge pose briefly here with an emphasis on the upper back. Rolling down to the ground. Feet, maybe a couple fist distance in between. You don't need to have, for me, my proportions to touch my heel is too close. 
So my heels are kind of a distance away where I can't quite touch them. It's not often a cue you hear, so you don't have to always listen to every cue. You need to pay attention to what the poses feel like for you and for your body, because it's probably different than someone else's. So for me, this is the right positioning. So you do want your, like you have, we're squeezing a block or a beach ball in between your legs, so no splaying of the legs out wide. Pushing the shoulder to the elbow into the ground, fingertips pointing towards the sky, palms facing towards each other. I'm gonna push my feet into the ground, lift my hips up, and then see, I don't want to, I'm not going to lift my hips so far off the ground into this, the full, maybe kind of, you know, what you might think of as bridge pose. I'm going to have them a little bit lower. My back is pretty neutral, so there's not a lot of kind of tucking action. And then I'm going to push my shoulder into my elbow into the ground so that I'm getting this Arching, arching and we're opening in my upper chest and back. My hips may rise just a little bit with that, but I'm bringing my chin towards, or my chest towards my chin. So I'm pushing down so that my chin stays where it is, but my chest and collarbone moves towards my chin. My low back is certainly doing some work, but and, you know my my legs and my glutes, but really a lot of the action is in my upper spine here. There's no pinching in my low back. I'm not squeezing my glutes; they're pretty malleable right now. My breath pushing the elbows, the shoulders into the ground. And exhaling slowly, lowering the spine, rolling it down to the ground, tailbone and hips last. And a little constructive rest here. You can widen your feet out more to mass distance, knees in towards each other, hands on your low belly. A moment here to reevaluate. I'm noticing that maybe your heartbeat is beating a bit faster and maybe it feels like a little bit more work to slow down the breathing. Just letting the body slow down in its own pace. Ready, walking the feet in towards each other, roll over onto one side, pausing for a moment in fuel position. Pushing, using your hands to push you up. I'll invite you to come into um, a legs up the wall position. So hopefully you have a wall available to you. If not, you could always kind of make the little wall set up 
with um, maybe even like a couch, um, or you could even make a little bolster ramp to won't be all the way like a vertical wall that you can always have your legs up the bolster here. If you have your strap handy, you can tie the strap, wrap it around your upper thighs. But if you have a wall available to you, this is a really nice option. Taking a blanket in this kind of half folded position, give it one more fold. So now it's a pretty narrow, almost like torso ish width. Certainly not going to be true for everyone. And placing your bolster about maybe an inch or so away from the wall. I'm going to turn these lights off so I'm not blinded here. The blanket comes down behind you. Make sure it is whatever kind of distance is appropriate for you, really, for your back so that your shoulder blades are going to be supported here. And that's going to go, so you almost have a T with the bolster and then the blanket. Maybe so you can see, maybe a little bit better. And then coming to sit on your bolster, Place your hands on the ground to help support you and shift your hips so that your hip and your butt are against the wall. And then rolling your shoulder, whichever one is closer to the ground, down onto the edge of the blanket. So my left shoulder's coming down and the left shoulder kind of just on the edge of the blanket here. And then I'm going to roll over onto my back, bringing the legs up the wall. My shoulder blades are kind of nestled between this blanket. My head is on the blanket. My legs are off the wall. If I want a slight continued heart opening, I can bring my arms above my head into this diamond shape position. I'm just resting here. I'll keep track of the time here for a couple of minutes while we rest in this position. This can be your Shavasana for today. And an abbreviated kind of restorative segment today. So if you would like to continue on after this legs up the wall, what you can do is set up a, a shavasana shape of your choosing as your final restorative. Maybe choosing the stone hinge, which is in several other refresh and restore classes, where you have two blocks and the bolster laying on top. Maybe having the bolster underneath the knees. But in the legs up the wall, those. Letting some of the blood start to circulate in a different way through your legs, letting gravity pull some of the junk in your system maybe got stuck back towards the torso and line of new juice to come into the legs and move it up. I'll watch the clock for several more minutes here to relax and just 
soak up your practice, your heart opening practice, releasing control of the breath. Slowly drawing the breath back into the body. More alert fashion. Move on your fingers and toes, roll your wrists, roll your ankles. Bending your knees so that your bottoms of your feet are on the wall. Carefully rolling over to one side. Maybe rolling off of the bolster a little bit, maybe rolling off of the blanket. Coming up here for a moment. And pushing out with one hand and the other. Keeping the eyes soft or closed. Just coming into a quick seat. Hands into the chest. Hands into your heart. Wow. 
coming down as a thank you to yourself for making time for this practice. Day for whatever else is yet to come. As soon as you can meet it with a open heart. Namaste.